In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear friends, we gather today to celebrate Requiem Mass for the repose of the soul of Francis Goodman Frank. We are here in St Mary's in Abercrombie Street in the Calton, which was in many ways the, the seedbed of Frank's learning and faith formation and indeed for the family. We can't gather together physically in the numbers that we would like to share in this Mass, but we are gathered together at this time, gathered together in faith and in spirit to say thank you to God for the life of Frank and to ask God to grant him a place of happiness, light and peace in the heavenly kingdom. To celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries on behalf of Francis, let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. As our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, may our hope of resurrection for your departed servant Francis also find new strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now listen to our scripture readings. Let us be nourished by the word of God. Now the first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. God has raised up one of David's descendants, Jesus, as Saviour. Paul and his friends went by sea from Paphos to Perga to Pamphylia, who John left them to go back to Jerusalem. The others carried on from Perga till they reached Antioch in Pisidia. Here they went to synagogue on the Sabbath and took to their seats. After a lesson from the law and the prophets had been read, the presidents of the synagogue sent them a message. Brothers, if you would like to address some words of encouragement to the congregation, please do so. Paul stood up, held up a hand for silence, and began to speak. Men of Israel and fearers of God, listen to the God of our nation, Israel. Choose our ancestors and made our people great when they were living as foreigners in Egypt. Then by divine power he led them out and for about 40 years took care of them in the wilderness. When he had destroyed seven nations, Canaan, he put them in possession of their, their land for about 450 years. After this he gave them judges down from the prophet Samuel. Then they, they demanded a king and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin. After 40 years he deposed and made David son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will carry out my whole purpose to keep his promise God has raised up for Israel. One of David's descendants, Jesus as Saviour, whose coming was heralded by John when he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the whole people of Israel. Before John ended his career, he said, I am not the one you imagine me to be. That one is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal. The word of the Lord. The Lord, he will be my shepherd. Nothing more shall I
passing more shall I want in valleys of green he lets me lie to restful waters he leads me the Lord he will be According to his word, if ever I walk in darkness, nothing more would I fear. Nothing more shall I want. He leads me along the path of right, according to His word. Under the eyes of my foes And over my head you pour your oil My cup is flowing over The Lord Nothing more shall I want. He leads me along the path of right, according to His word. Your love. Every day of my life, my hope will be in your ways as long as I shall live. The Lord. Nothing more shall I want. He leads me along the path of right, according to His word. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We shall stay with the Lord forever. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them. Like the other people who have no hope, we believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching 
that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise and those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. disciples, Jesus said to them, I tell you most solemnly, no servant is greater than his master, no messenger is greater than the man who sent him. Now that you know this, happiness will be yours if you behave accordingly. I'm not speaking about all of you. I know the ones I have chosen. But what scripture says must be fulfilled. Someone who shares my table rebels against me. I tell you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. I tell you most solemnly, whoever welcomes the one I send welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, it was on the 7th of July, 1946, that Teresa and John Goodwin welcomed their second son into the world, Frank Francis. It was to the family home in 47 Green Street where Frank would be brought up along with John and Alec, Sadie, Teresa and Gerard. Calton was a very different place in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, Frank's young years, but there were some institutions, some remain and some don't, and one institution which remains is indeed this magnificent church of St Mary's in Abercrombie Street, which was an important part of the faith life sacramental life of the Goodwin family. There was St Mary's School in uh, just round the corner there in Forbes Street, Forbes Drive and um, that, that school doesn't survive but that's where Frank went to his primary school. He didn't really care for school. In fact I believe his mummy would drop him off, we trees would drop him off at school and go or shopping and can their way back through the, the swings, there she'd find Frank waiting on a swing for his mammy to take him home and need to see we trees as soon march them back into school. But when he went on to St Mary's Senior School in West Street, 
the same pattern happened again. It was in West Street and straight down Dornock Street and into the twin, because Frank didn't care very much for school. He left the Calton to down to South England to RG Calling to train as a jockey. Frank's love for horse racing and the horses was to be something which would endure all his life. But his training as a jockey didn't endure all his life because I believe he soon sprouted and actually soon put on a bit of weight. And that brought to quite a swift end any aspirations he had um, for the horse racing. He came back here and worked as a general labourer in the construction industry, but didn't care much for that. And he basically had to join his dad and his brother John as a porter just up there at the, the meat market of the, the Gallagate. He worked hard there, but in the 1980s, his dad was to have a stroke and it meant that Frank's focus was to become his carer along with his mum caring for his dad John and eventually he was to become the carer for his mum too and that was a role he did with great devotion, great devotion. His brothers and sisters who um, mourn him today um, are very much aware of the debt of gratitude that they have to their brother Frank who was a very devoted son. Um, his caring for his dad involved um, a lot of the pushing of the wheelchair and lifting his dad up and down the stairs and um, it was not only something he did with devotion, he seemed just not to mind that caring came naturally. There were some girlfriends on and off but they never really came to anything because Frank liked, I suppose, to do his own thing, not to be told what he was to do or when he was to do it, but enjoyed the bachelor's life, bachelor life, and indeed, um, I'm reliably informed if um, anybody tried to come between him and the, the horses, well, the, the, they were the person to go and not the horses, so he had a good life. By the time I came to St Mary's, in 2003, Frank's father had already passed away and he was very much devoted to his mum. You would see the two of them go on the messages together, or Frank would be seeing his mum safely across the road, but they were hinging back at the two of them. And you could just tell that there was a, a son who was devoted to his mum. In fact, we Teresa had a great blessing in Frank. And even as Teresa got older, maybe even a wee bit more difficult, Frank's patient character shone through. You'd often see Frank just on his routine, loved walking everywhere, and then I'd often see him just walking down to the gallery gate, maybe just down for a pint in the town, and then back home. He lived a simple and a very quiet life, a very private person. And to that private, quiet man, the community here in the Calton who remember him bid him farewell to the father's house. We wish him peace and rest. To the family who mourn the passing of their brother Frank, the, his ill health and eventually being placed in a home slowly and quietly robbed you of of Frank and almost like another better wave when it doesn't seem to get more difficult, it does get more difficult and we're being deprived of saying goodbye to Frank in the very public way that you would want to at this time. But the time will come, this time will pass and we'll be able in a very public way to remember Frank. But most importantly, we are remembering him today at the altar of the Lord. the power of the Mass, the significance of the Requiem transcends heaven and earth. It bridges heaven and earth. We remember him here at the altar in this place that was sacred to him, sacred to the family. And we pray that God hears our prayers. 
who listened today to one of those Easter Gospels. It was the Last Supper. It tells us after Jesus had finished washing their feet. We know that happened at the Last Supper. Jesus tells us that no one is greater than the Master. And in that, it's very much to do with suffering. Jesus is telling his disciples that they too might have to suffer. And that's a lesson for us too in this time of suffering. We can add that to the sufferings of Christ. But we believe that for Frank, there is no suffering anymore. The Christian funeral is different from the secular funeral, where you just talk about the past and about stories. Our mass is very much about the future. This is about Frank finding life in eternity, being with his wee mam and his dad. It's about Frank enjoying and sharing in the glory of Christ's resurrection, promised from Christ on the cross. Frank, make those words your own. Today you will be with me in paradise, said the Lord, and we pray that you're at paradise. Frank, eternal rest grant unto you. May the perpetual light shine upon you. May you rest in peace. And may your soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let's pray now our prayers of intercession. Praying for Frank, praying for each other, praying for those who are suffering at this time. For Frank, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the family and friends of Frank, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us gathered here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are suffering, for the sick, those in chronic pain, especially those suffering COVID-19, those who are frightened or lonely, who need the comforting presence of God this day, we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are in frontline service during this time of crisis, especially those who are fearful for their own health, that God supplies to them his grace and strength, we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember those who have died, for all who are mourning, who each day are filled with longing for the presence of someone they love, we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, graciously accept these prayers and petitions we make on behalf of our brother Francis. Be gracious and receive them, we pray, for we make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. This concludes our Liturgy of the Word. Now we proceed to the altar to offer the simple bread and wine to become the body and blood of our Lord. To offer, as Christ asked us to do, offer bread and wine in memory of him that we may receive too from the bread of life.
Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice into your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who through the ending of present things, we ask you to open up the beginnings of things to come. Look favourably in our offering, O Lord so that your departed servant Francis may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end. We acclaim, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaot, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
He took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, indeed of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Philip our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Francis, whom you've called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace if we are watching this with others. For on our own in isolation, let us contemplate the peace of Christ. It is a peace the world cannot give, a peace the world does not offer. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you 
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Sweetheart of Jesus, font of love and mercy, today we come thy blessing to implore. O oh, touch our hearts, so cold and so ungrateful, and make them, Lord, thine own forevermore. Sweet heart of Jesus, we Sweetheart of Jesus, make us pure and gentle, and teach us how to do thy blessed will, to follow close the print of thy dear footsteps, and when we fall, sweetheart, oh, love us still. Sweet heart of Jesus, we all hearts that love thee, and may thine own heart ever blessed be. Bless us, dear Lord, and bless the friends we cherish, and keep us true to Mary and to thee. Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that your servant Francis, for whom we've celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the brothers and sisters, before we process to our place of committal, I'd like to extend to Frank's family again my personal sympathies, condolences, and indeed the condolences and sympathies of the whole parish community here in the Calton. While we can't celebrate in a public way Frank's funeral rites, we are no less warmed by many happy memories that you will have of, of Frank. In fact, Sadie was telling me a story of one of Frank's um, escapades um, related to horses. Surprise, surprise. But at one point, his brother John asked me to put a line on for him. And Frank looked at John's choice and decided there's no way that's winning. I'm not putting that line on. Needless to say, John's horse won. And Frank gave fun out. And was, well, he was in a bit of bother. And I'm sure there was names being used that we can repeat here in the chapel. But you will have your own memories. But the abiding recollection should not be a memory of Frank, but a memory of the promises of Christ. Death is not the end. In death, life is changed, not ended. Frank is at peace. We ask God to bless Frank, give him a reward for all the good, and any sins he committed in human weakness is forgiven and wiped away by the blood of the Lamb. My dear brothers and sisters, in peace, let us take Frank to his place of rest. <laughs> Make me whole, fashion me.